Ever since Minecraft popularized early access gaming, the amount of games funding their own development have gone through the roof. Following Minecraft's massive success, it wasn't long until Steam introduced their own funding program in 2013 called Steam Early Access, and countless games that have been released into it since. However, not all games are able to make the path from idea through to final product in a few years. In fact, some games have sat in early access for many years more than anyone could have predicted. Here is a list of games that have been in early access limbo the longest, but remember that just because they're taking a while to get there, it doesn't mean that they're bad games. Before then though, if you could slap the like and smash the subscribe, we promise to let you access our hearts. Interstellar Marines The Alien franchise has inspired many video game developers over the years. Some more directly in the form of Alien Breed, some less directly in the form of that weird boss in Echo the Dolphin. So you can understand why Zero Point Software wanted to make an online co-op PvP game based around the idea of the Marines from Aliens. An unsuccessful Kickstarter campaign in 2012 did not put the team off, and they launched Interstellar Marines into Steam Early Access in 2013. Things looked great for a while with the game posting major updates almost monthly and receiving positive reviews up until 2015. Despite receiving 9 updates and several hotfixes during 2015, 2016 would only bring 2 updates, and it would be downhill from there. In 2017, Interstellar Marine's director Kim Ha Jorgensen revealed he was now the only person working on the game, and at the time he didn't even know programming. The game would not receive another update in 2017, but would be updated once in 2018 and once in 2019 with many volunteers helping out. The game is still being worked on to this day, but the crushing weight of overwhelmingly negative reviews for the game is seemingly keeping new gamers away from Interstellar Marines, surely a death blow for many an online game. The fact that Aliens Fireteam is coming out soon also doesn't really help the game's chances. 7 Days to Die Seven Days to Die is an unusual game on this list, not because of what happened to it, but actually what didn't. As far as I'm aware, there was no major news story about Seven Days to Die devs disappearing, disasters destroying code, or any other huge problem. It's just taking ages to make the game. But why? Why is it taking so long? Well, games take a long time to make. When compiling for this list, the most common factor in all these games that are in early access for so long is that they have fairly complex systems, small teams, and to get the game to the standard that the developer wants, it takes a long time. Now, despite looking uglier than most games and having more pointy triangles than a Toblerone orgy, there's so much going on in seven days that you will quickly forget about its dated visuals. The game was also ported to Xbox One and PlayStation 4 with Telltale publishing those versions, though no mention was made of it still being an early access product and a work in progress. Telltale's closure in 2018 led to a few problems with updates. The console version was last updated in 2017 and the publishing rights have returned to the fun pimps, but as of yet no further updates have been released for either PlayStation or Xbox, and instead the game has been left in the same state for many years. So if you're gonna play 7 days, make sure it's not on console. Project Zomboid So many games on this list enter development only to falter due to various issues, eventually leading to a lack of updates. Project Zomboid has one of the longest early access tenures on this list and has indeed suffered from many, many issues during its development, including the developers having their laptops stolen. The development proved to be so turbulent they'd actually host a red talk called How Not To Make A Game. But the Project Zomboid team has still managed to keep updates and news rolling out on a regular basis, and it's these updates that have made Zomboid a great game and easily one of the best survival games on Steam. Played from an isometric point of view, you are tasked with surviving an open world zombie outbreak. Buildings need to be raided and supplies found, and as development continued, they'd add vehicles and farming, among other QOL improvements. Much like Seven Days to Die, development on Project Zomboid is very, very slow due to their small team. But it's obvious that developers the Indie Stone are dedicated to making the ultimate zombie survival horror game, and they're going to take their time to make it. Project Zomboid is in good shape and well worth picking up now, but just don't expect updates to be overly regular. Goddess and Goddess Wars 
Much of Peter Molyneux's early work has been largely forgotten about, mainly due to him being the Sean Murray of his time. For those who don't know, Peter Molyneux is a serial overpromiser. While I can excuse developers getting overexcited about their games on Goddess, Peter messed up. He let us down, and more importantly, let Brian Henderson down. Molyneux had previously released the mobile game Curiosity, What's Inside the Cube, a multiplayer game where players work together to mine away at a cube to reveal what was underneath each layer. The final player would receive a life-changing prize. The winner was the aforementioned Brian Henderson, who was told he would be the God of Goddess, Molyneux's next game. He'd also receive a share of the profits. Goddess was due to be a similar game to Populous, the game that put Molyneux on the map. After a successful Kickstarter campaign, the project launched on Steam. As of 2016, there has been no further updates to Goddess, nor has there been any updates to its Kickstarter page. In 2016, they released a standalone game called Goddess Wars, focused on the combat aspects of the game. This has also not been updated since 2016. Goddess hasn't been cancelled, so chances are there is still someone working on it in a broom cupboard over at Developer 22 Cans. One thing is for sure, there's a whole lot of upset Kickstarter backers out there, and Brian Henderson never got to be God. Well, not in Goddess, but Henderson would be included as God in the indie game Not a Hero. Peter Molyneux, meanwhile, was last seen trying to sell eggs to chickens. Blockscape When Blockscape was first released, some claimed it could be Minecraft 2. Blockscape is a voxel-style block-building game developed solely by Jens Blomquist. It entered development in 2009, much like many other voxel block-building games following the success of Minecraft. Blomquist, not content with making a clone like many of the other games being released, wanted to make something that felt like a step-up from Minecraft's blocky worlds. Blockscape's screenshots were, and make no mistake here, beautiful. A voxel game like no other at the time, it shunned those blocks and sharp edges for something smoother and more pleasing to the eye, yet still voxel in style. Castles and buildings all gleamed and looked wonderful, and it entered Steam's early access in 2014. Updates would prove to be a little hit and miss with a number of updates at release, but then take nearly 18 months for another. Development would stabilise, and throughout 2016, there would be a series of regular updates for the game. Despite this, Blockscape found itself in the position of a number of games on this list. Players felt that development wasn't moving quickly enough and gave the game negative reviews, which led Blomquist to plead with the community to post positive ones instead. Negative reviews led to a lack of sales, and in turn that meant development taking even longer. In 2019, Blomquist issued a public apology and promised to continue working on the game while communicating with the fanbase better. Since then, Blockscape has seen regular news and regular updates from the game's sole developer. Pro Wrestling X I have followed this game with curious interest pretty much since it was first announced way back in 2003. Dave Wisniewski, disenfranchised with subpar wrestling game releases, decided he wanted to make his own game, a fan sequel to WWF No Mercy, one of the greatest wrestling games of all time. However, he wasn't a game developer himself, so making such a game was going to prove to be a Herculean task. Pro Wrestling X has suffered from that same old issue. Fans becoming upset with slow development times and a lack of updates, leading to lower sales and less money for development. The latter fact is important, as Dave Wisniewski has been outsourcing development, with others working on his game remotely. Initially, I feared that the game had met the same fate as many other early access games and had been cancelled due to the lack of updates on Steam, as well as the price being reduced to 79 pence in the UK. However, we're glad to say the project is still alive and well, with their Facebook page up to date with development progress. There's also footage of upcoming developments in the game, proving that the game is still being worked on, but it is moving very slowly indeed. In 2021, there's more choice than ever with wrestling games, but we hope this game reaches the finish line eventually, and that's the bottom line, because... etc. You know the rest. Paranormal. Paranormal's release date is listed as October 2012, six months before Steam's early access program would begin, starting life on moddb.com before later releasing on Desera, finally moving over to Steam in late 2013, joining the early access program. The game proved very popular with Steam users, with many praising its found footage-inspired gameplay. The positive reviews continued right up until 2015, and that's where things get a little rocky. Paranormal suffered from similar issues to other games on this list. 
a one-man development team, life seemed to be getting in the way of Matt Cohen finishing his game. Funding was another issue as, according to Matt, the game was no longer bringing in enough money to warrant continuing development on a regular basis. So it's back to the can't develop without funds, game gets negative reviews due to lack of development, game sales drop, developer gets less funds situation. Matt Cohen has promised to finish the game, but it doesn't look like development will be progressing very quickly, unfortunately. It's a shame because it is genuinely a very good concept. Games like Phasmophobia show exactly that. Arcane Worlds We totally forgot about this game's existence until we started researching this article. We first learned about the existence of this game years and years ago when we heard that someone was trying to make a spiritual successor to Magic Carpet. The Magic Carpet IP has been lost in the depths of EA's basement alongside the likes of Dead Space, RIP, Burnout, RIP and SSX, the saddest of rips since the release of Magic Carpet in 1996. For those who aren't aware, it's a first person magic carpet riding game which involves you flying around an open world, collecting mana, building your castle and defeating the enemy wizards that populate those worlds. As mentioned, EA hasn't shown any interest in reviving the franchise, which is why there was such a fuss over this game when pictures first appeared back in 2011. The game moved to Steam after being sold through the developer's personal website as well as Desera. Arcane Worlds has the same issue as many games on this list. Part-time developer juggling making a game and, you know, having a life. Reviews are classed as mixed, with many people disappointed with the lack of major updates for the game. Work is still continuing on Arcane Worlds, but once again, progress is slow. Now, after writing this list, we realised many games end up stuck in early access for similar reasons. Often, it's the lack of money to fund the thousands of hours it takes to finish the game. It could also be mental health, sometimes generated by angry fans unhappy with the state of the game. So much can go wrong, and games can get severely delayed and cancelled for many reasons. Just remember that game developers are humans too. They make mistakes and are not perfect. Remember, please, to be kind. So there you have it, 8 Steam Early Access games stuck in Limbo. Have you played any of these games? Are there any other games stuck in Limbo that we didn't cover on the list that you think we should have? Please, as ever, sign off down in the comments below. You know that your boy loves to hear from you. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please take this time to have a look at all the other cultured virtual social media content out there on the interwebs, or the links and gizmos and bits and words and all that jazz are on the screen right now if you've enjoyed the video please consider liking it subscribing to the channel hitting that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos we of course hope to see you in the next one but until then until then cool bleh.